Welcome to TFNN. How you doing? I'm doing great. So here, yeah, I mean, this is pretty in incredible. Uh, just in general, what you do, meaning the developments are so large. So tell us about Midtown and tell us what you're looking to do in St. Petersburg, Florida. Sure. Uh, it's, a, it's a big question. It is. Uh, I know. I know. Trust me. Uh, you know, it, there's not many there's not many times in your professional career when you get an opportunity like what the trop site is yes and and you know we're fortunate enough that um, we, we've done something that's very similar in Midtown Miami before where it was the old Buena Vista rail yard so it was a brownfield site meaning an, an environmental site yes that was in uh, the the urban core of Miami, and uh, and essentially it was kind of the the hole in the proverbial donut, much like much like the Tropicana Field site, and uh, in in working our way through the transformation of that site, which initially was 55 acres, and then over time we acquired some additional pieces like. Uh, another piece known as the Chiquita Banana Site, which was actually the uh, the packaging and shipping uh, warehouses for Chiquita Banana. Okay. Um, because this was all along where the the railroad used to run, flag yes. the railroad. Uh, the site continued to grow eventually to where now it is approximately 85 acres worth of land, and uh, it's a site that had zero occupants uh, when. Uh, Midtown Miami was started and uh, you know 20 20 years later there's over 6,000 people that live in uh, Midtown and the the important thing is not just about Midtown and what it did but uh, you have the design district you have Wynwood which is the Wynwood walls a, a really popular and famous art area uh, you have the edge district um, Edgewater, rather. Yes. Uh, so you have all these other areas that have grown out of the growth and organically continued to prosper because of what we were able to do in Midtown. Uh, that's an important aspect as you talk about the TROP site, because it's not just about the TROP site. The TROP site itself at 86 acres is only a minuscule, it's, not, it's less than 1% of all of St. Petersburg. So it's, it's what it means, it's what it can create that's important. And so having done that before in another place here in Florida and understanding how you, you grow something that becomes a benefit to everybody and that there's a lot of community input from day one until day, you know, 10,000 is, that's really what city building is about. And like I started off by saying, this is a, a unique experience where we're fortunate enough to be in the running, to be able to get to do it twice in our professional careers, as opposed to only once or never at all. And folks, okay, you can, you can see the job they did. It's mid MidtownMiami.com, and it's gorgeous. So check it out, MidtownMiami.com. So l let me ask you, you know, it it's incredible, you know, and I've watched this whole thing come down because I'm a developer down here myself, all right? So it gets really intriguing. How do you deal, there's two years left, how do you deal with a project that this is this big, then you got to deal with the politics of it, then you got to deal with the neighborhoods. What are the, what are the, like, to you the hardest parts of dealing with all of this i know uh, i know i'm giving you big questions i'm sorry yeah no that, that's okay it's 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 good uh I, I think probably the most difficult thing is that uh, whenever well, let me start by saying this whenever you're dealing with a project a project that's this large yes. it's always a public private partnership it doesn't matter who owns the land. Yes, uh, that's that's irrelevant. Uh, ultimately, you you have to work with the community. You have to work with the local, state, and sometimes federal government in order to make the project successful. There, there's just no other way. Uh, the difference is 
that in this particular instance, um, when you're dealing with a parcel that is currently a, a municipally owned parcel, that there's another there, there's another party who's involved that we have no communication with yet, which is the raise. Yes. Uh, it creates a lot of uncertainties uh, that um, are out of our control, quite frankly. That in a typical private seller, private buyer situation, uh, the person with the largest checkbook generally gets the property. Okay. And and that's the end of it. That's definitely not the case here, and that's fine. Uh, because all those other factors would be just as important anyways, the community outreach, the working with the government, the working with local businesses, all, all of those types of aspects would be important otherwise. But there's on top of that, there's still just this uncertainty that we don't know, none of us know if we'll actually make it to a finish line. Yes, which, which is so impressive. And folks, okay, I'll have both of these uh, uh, so you can see how extensive this, these proposals are. What is, what is amazing to me, well, let me, let me ask this. Like, in, uh, the extension, the proposal is so extensive, right? Like, in order to get to that point in your life, how did you get there? I mean, I know you did this once, but it's pretty, it's a really extensive, man. It's pretty cool. So, um, this particular project is a little different in, in the sense that uh, my partner, Alex Vidia and I, that uh, he, he's, he's the uh, owner of Midtown Development. And we actually started working on this in the beginning of 2018. Okay. So long before there was actually an RFP, yes. uh, a request for proposals for people who don't speak developer language. Uh, we we actually uh, we identified the site. We went and we started researching the the proposals that were put together in 2007 when the city went through a similar process. Yes. And um, and then we started going out and speaking to community leaders, finding out who the who the right consultants were to work with in order to try and put this together. So we've actually been at this now for almost four years at this point. I mean, it, you know, we're getting close to four years because we're already halfway through 2021. Well, listen, uh, congratulations. I hate to cut it short, but unfortunately, I'd love to have you back on again. I want, because I think you've done a phenomenal job, man. I mean, the amount of work you. that's put in and the amount of risk that you take is phenomenal um, in order to make the city better. Dean, thank you so much for being with us and I look forward to having you again. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a great one. Have a safe one. All right.